Welcome to Homicide the Podcast. I'm your bro. bro. <laughs> I'm your bro. I'm your bro. <laughs> I'm your bro, Brandon. Gross. I'm your host, Brandon. And I'm Kevin. We that switched was, it up for you this time, and that apparently was, that didn't work very well. No, that was a little <laughs> awkward. I'm your bro. You're welcome. Man, that's, that's what I get for trying. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, welcome to episode nine. Eight. 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 I had my, I actually had this right. Should I be all rude to you? I mean, you usually like are. you were to me. Eight. Episode eight. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to, I started off pretending to be like you, so I'm just continuing on to be more like you. So okay. this episode should be, oh, I guess maybe I'll be just a little bit sassier in this episode. Okay. <laughs> Sounds great. Um, more judgmental. Yeah. Well, welcome <laughs> everyone to episode eight. Eight. Yeah. I was about to burp. That soda. Yep, there you go. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Anna on I this know. board. Anna, she's getting the hang of it. Yes. Anna <laughs> is uh, is back here once again. Hello, Hello. Anna. Hello. How you so doing? So happy to have you here again. <laughs> so, how is everyone? What's new? Ugh, I don't know. What is new? Britney Spears. We were just talking about the Queen. She's Britney not Spears. new. The, the conspiracy but theories. She might be new. We right. might have she a new Britney Spears right. in the house. Is Britney Spears actually Britney Spears anymore? Oh my lord! I want to be. If she is really Britney Spears, I want to be her friend. I just want to be that girl. Talk. Tell me everything. How yeah. can we fix this? With the way she holds her knives and like sways. <laughs> <laughs> She's a great dancer. We did, there is a TikTok out there that we saw the other day that we both died about. <laughs> It's yeah. Britney doing her like dance where she goes back and forth. No, it's not a dance. But it's, it's where she's showing her outfit and she like comes oh, to and the she's screen like and she's like mm, whatever. Mm, mm. But then it's the view from inside of a microwave. And it said like what I do while I wait for my food to eat up. <laughs> yeah. And it literally is just her coming. She's like, oh, it's hilarious. <laughs> off. I love it so much. <laughs> that one you showed me it was quite it was good. It, it was, was good. quite something. Well, um, Britney yeah. Spears has something in common with our episode today. She does. She's she a does. a mother. She's a mother. She hasn't killed, but today's no. episode is yeah. mothers who've killed. Today's episode is all about mommy. deadly mothers. So it's basically moms who've killed. No, that's terrible. Which I have a little bit of a spin on mine, but there are a, a couple of spin. things. So just a reminder for all of our fun little listeners that we do have our Homotown murders that come out on Thursdays whenever they get emailed Sent to, to us. us. Yep. We do have quite a few, which is really exciting. So uh, We'll need some more, so <clears throat> get your stories on over. You will. How and do they do that, Kevin? Okay, well, if you want to send us in your Homotown murder, go ahead and write into us at murder at homicidepodcast.com. However, I did have a couple of people send me some via Facebook that to my friends, and that was fine too. So, yeah. uh, but really, yeah, send it to murder at homicidepodcast.com. That is something that you kind of share your hometown murder with us. You give us the all the tea, all the tea and then we talk about the tea on the web. Uh, and then we share this. it yes. in your words, in our voice, Correct. which could be interesting. Yeah, and we still have our What's the Tea giveaway where we're really kind of just begging you to leave us some. No, just like us. <laughs> are we begging them love to like me it? choose me <laughs> love me <laughs> wow Meredith um, Grey you're welcome <laughs> oh Grey's Anatomy it is the Grey's reference such a good show the um, original pick me uh-huh. mm, I forgot about that episode was that after or before she drowned before before mm, yeah alright with Mick Dreamy? Yes. Not McSteamy. No, she wasn't with McSteamy. I have a dream to be on that show, I'm not going to lie. I mean, that'd be pretty cool. I do. I would love to be on that. So I'll be on set with you that day. Producers, casting, hi. Shonda Rhimes, if you are listening to our podcast, I Hello. mean, because of course you are. Because why wouldn't you be? <laughs> you have two fabulous actors here, Anna. Hi. And me. So, thank you. Yeah, although you can't see Anna. She's here. I feel like I'm like just a voice in <laughs> the, the voice walls. voice of God. You're yeah. our voice of Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Every time I'm editing, I do it where it's like, if I start talking, it's just the wide view of both of you. <laughs> Staring off to the side. <laughs> it is. It is literally, it is. we're just like, I know. <laughs> I do love that. Know. Anyway. Eventually, we should get another camera. We actually we should. We should way. like point it. <laughs> It's all um, about the cinematography in podcasting, you know? It is. It's, it's all about being creative. eloquent with your words, and I don't get yeah. that either. We are a very creative bunch here. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like, okay, it's Marty. It's making that noise. It, it sounds like somebody's farting. It was my hand. Okay, so I did hear that a little bit <laughs> earlier, too. I, I was accident. like, are, is, one, are, is somebody you. literally <laughs> just farting <laughs> over and over just letting out some farts? We're just shitting all over the place. Oh, God. Um, Actually, it's my hand. I'm... When we filmed Three last, girls who shit and fart. 
<laughs> you know what they say. What? They're human? I don't actually know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just wanted to say shit. I, I once had a, I, I once had a friend part. that was like, I don't, I don't poop. And I was like, what? Well, I don't. And she was like, I don't. Girl. I shit. <laughs> <laughs> I drop a deuce. I shit. Oh, that was great. Anyway, we also have Brandon. What's the tea giveaway, which we were just talking mm-hmm. about before we derailed. But basically, please go and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts specifically. Spotify is great as well. Spotify is kind of growing with our reviews. That seems to be the popular channel. But Apple is pretty powerful. So if you can go and leave us a five-star review. Yes. With some words of encouragement. <laughs> Tell everybody. If you go and leave us a review from now through, I think, the it's, end of December is. Yeah, our episode we have running in on December 26th because. Yep. Yeah, through Tuesday, the 26th. Tuesday yeah. that week is right after Christmas. Great time for you guys to go return all your gifts and listen to Homicide the Podcast. On oh, radio. yes. Or listen to the to the podcast on your way to purchase gifts. Well, that too. We run it through the 26th and we'll announce our winners on the 2nd. Basically, we're giving away a fun little package of swag and some yep. other shit and an opportunity to join us on the podcast. Because why wouldn't you want to do that? <laughs> yeah, so please go and do that. We love you. Thank you so much. Thank you. End of podcast. That's all it is. I just kidding. <laughs> okay, so episode eight, mommy, dearest, mommy, don't murder me. I think I went first last time, so I think that you get to go first this it's time. My time, Brandon. Okay, cool. So my murder is on a woman named Diane Odell. Diane and Diane. <laughs> I don't know, Diane. And I named. I labeled this one because I decided to put a name to it, but it's only two words. I'm calling it Little Boxes. Little Boxes. But what is that I song? was hoping you were going to sing that because every what, time I think of it, I, it's, I, it's of weeds. Weeds. It's a song. Oh my god! Well, how does it go though? Little L- boxes on, on the hillside. Little, little boxes on the hillside. Little boxes on the hillside. I don't remember. I loved it, but I loved that, it. I just, I mean, I loved that show, but that song is great. <laughs> okay. As a side note, when Brandon and I started dating, do you remember the show True Blood? I mean, yes. Yeah. Okay, I love that show. Never seen it. The, oh, it's so. Well, good. the intro has this really cool song that is. I don't even remember it. I don't remember it either, but I would sing it. I'm going to do bad things to you or whatever with a low ass <laughs> voice. And Brandon, I don't know why you thought this was sexy, but it was. I, didn't. I don't know. I was 25 and just so ready. But Brandon, <laughs> we would watch dumb. the show and Brandon would be like sitting at his computer because we watched on his like iMac or whatever. Yeah, because I didn't have a TV. <laughs> <laughs> a TV. And he would start singing it. It was the most awkward thing, but it also was super cute and endearing. And I did it reason. because you made it uncomfortable uh, at first. Because you I? got like nervous about it. It was like, okay, I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> I did? For sure. What does that mean I got nervous about it? Explain you just got uncomfortable. I don't know. Like I was like, who is this guy? He's so awkward. Probably. So you made it more awkward? <laughs> For sure. Way to keep somebody. It worked. I know. <laughs> <laughs> She's here next to me. <laughs> All right, anyway. Back to Diane. <laughs> so on May 10th, 2003 in Safford, Arizona, Thomas Bright headed over to a local storage unit with his friend, Tom Summers. Their goal that day was to partake in an auction of the delinquent renters' units. This wasn't something new for them, as Thomas has done it before. So he threw $75 out out for a storage shed shed number six, and he hoped that he would find something valuable enough to make some money off of it and recoup the $75. Inside, there were many boxes. All different sizes of boxes. (laughs) Big boxes, small boxes. (laughs) Medium boxes, wide boxes. (laughs) Okay, Dr. Seuss. <laughs> Inside, there was a bunch of different boxes, all covered in a really thick layer of dust as if, as if they were there for a long time. Opening the boxes, Thomas found pretty obvious items like old pictures, paper, documents, old clothing, old computer parts, gaming systems, and more. Continuing on, Thomas came to one box that was pretty banged up and had a strong odor. He decided to open it up, and all of a sudden, the smell hit him even stronger. One source said it was more of an earthy, musty smell. Thinking it could have been from a small animal that died, he just kept going and just to see what was inside. So inside, he found a bunch of moldy brown blankets and plastic bags. Intrigued as to what it was, he kept going. Unwrapping the contents inside, he saw the face and the mummified remains of an infant. Oh, no. Thomas was obviously terrified. Sources says uh, he started to yell out, baby in the box, dead baby in the box. (laughs) <laughs> why are you laughing I don't know. it's not funny but i mean it's something very alarming if i heard somebody say dead baby in the box i'd be like what the f- what is happening I, yeah. yeah i don't know that i would i don't well i yeah. you know i don't know they called wait, what i just don't know i just don't know well i don't i don't know <laughs> <laughs> this is 
so it's supposed to be funny. <laughs> no. <sighs> Sorry. Okay. Why are you laughing at dead babies? I don't know. There's some, something's happening. <laughs> something's going on. It's delirium. <laughs> We've been doing this for too long. <laughs> yeah. Calling the police immediately. That's they knew. Does. They yeah. didn't know what was about. They were about to uncover. So. Starting with checking the remaining boxes in the unit, the police ended up finding two more mummified remains. Of babies? By the end of the day, the police uncovered the body of one boy, one girl, and one whose sex could not be determined. So then, obviously, they wanted to see who owned the contents of the storage unit. Reaching out to the property owner of the storage unit was a Leroy Smith. He let them know that it was a unit that was rented to a Diane Odell. So Di- so at the, the reason that he was in the storage unit was because it was not paid. And when that yep. happens, people can go in and get shit. Yeah, so right? they do <clears throat> auctions. They actually have a TV show about it. That's weird. Well, do they really? Yeah, it's like on one of those just weird channels that see, people don't and watch. and this is why I don't go buy people's used shit. This is why. Because of dead yep. infants. I don't yeah. do it. I don't like it. <laughs> This is a common occurrence. Because <laughs> it happens all this the time. Likely. Oh, another, another, another body in the basket. Oh, this is awful. Okay. He let the uh, police know that she rented the unit starting in 1991. Granted, it is, what, what did I 2003? say? 2003. Throughout the years, Diane continued to pay the rent on the storage. However, she was known to always be late or behind on her payments. And eventually, the payments start stopped coming around 1993. So just a couple years after. Leroy, this is the part that's so fucking stupid. Uh, Leroy let him them know that he had a really lenient attitude when it came to collecting payment. For 10 years? And so for some reason, he decided to hang on to all of her shit for another decade before it was sent to the auction in 2023. it goes beyond lenient. Yeah, so meaning like for that's... 20 years, these babies were in a box in a storage unit. It was 10 years, I think. 20 years. Well, she had it. She started in 91. And then I know, I'm not done with my story. Oh, sorry. So at this point, the babies were in there for 20 years. The math still doesn't add up. I know, because I'm not done with my story. Oh, Let me keep okay, going. Okay. I should have <laughs> not added that part in. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you don't you know who I am? I know. Just okay. let me f- fucking do this. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> no. So, okay, so I started to writing this story one way and I switched it around, so I I should have moved to that part to it. So, okay. Whatever you're validated, get over Thank yourself. You. Thank you. <laughs> The search for Diane started, and eventually they found her living with her family in Rome, Pennsylvania. At this point, Diane was a 49-year-old mother who came off pretty well-behaved and clearly expressed her thoughts. Her family at the time only knew her as a loving mother who was always there for them. When the police brought in Diane for questioning, an odd yet familiar story started to unravel, and I purposely left this in here. I'll get to the yet familiar story in a moment, just so you don't call me out again. Um, and Diane told the officers that she had the babies while she was living with her mother in, I don't know how to say this, like, Kanejua? K-A-U-N-E-O-N-G-A. Lake. Kanejunga. Kanejunga. Whatever lake. It's in the Catskills of New York. And she had the babies in 1982, 1983, and 1985. There's the 20 years. There's the 20 years. Originally, she claimed that these babies were born, stillborn, and that she didn't know what to do. She didn't know, she didn't want to throw them out like trash, and she wanted to give them a proper burial. So she wrapped them up and put them in a box until she could afford the burials. Okay, so, that, okay, so when I hear that, mm. okay. <laughs> when yes. I hear it, I feel like I would be like, okay, I mean, yeah, okay. Like, it, I, I don't know. I could. Be well, she like, was scared. Like she maybe, was maybe confused. that could make sense. She didn't know what to do. Yeah. yeah. So confused by the motives, the police continued to question Diane, and things started to not add up. Her story kept changing, and the story kept evolving. Mm. So up until this point, the police hadn't didn't really have anything to go with uh, without any evidence of the murder or a murder, and with uh, without Diane admitting it to her herself. A murder. <laughs> <laughs> That was another moment where I'm like, I just hope they didn't hear that. With another Mordor. <laughs> and then I saw, out of the corner of my eye, I saw you like shake your head. <laughs> and I'm like, shit. This is what's great. Isn't? This is why Anna, I like Anna being here because I literally, we just lock eyes I'm immediately. I'm the camera like, in the office. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most embarrassing are, thing I do are. in my, t- my, my week. You are. Talk yes. on this podcast. No, it is just heaven. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Okay. What? What are we going to say? I'm just so embarrassing of to myself like no brandon you're one of the cutest humans i've ever met in my life podcasters are supposed to actually like be able to speak you know they're like <laughs> the, the, the serious true crime podcast we're like on the night of may 20 you know whatever and and we're just like oh, 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 you know so dumb <laughs> oh well yeah maybe that's hopefully we go beyond 20 listeners <laughs> <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> 
It's just our parents, like we talked I about. <laughs> You're for adults. All right. Where was I? They continue to question her. And at this point, they have no evidence saying that it was a murder. So just let me talk. I am. <laughs> have no evidence. No ev- 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 <laughs> because now I'm getting hot. And when I get hot, I get even more like. I know. <gasps> okay. Flustered. Yeah. I All get right. flustered. Okay. So there was no evidence. And I, and I said evidence. <laughs> He said what? Edmunds. Whatever. Wait, just like whatever to say. Anyways, funny. there was none of that. <laughs> there was none of that. <laughs> there was none of that. No and uh, without Diane admitting to the crime, it looked as if Diane would would be able to just go on with her life. This is when the police started to question her even more, asking her over and over what happened in her account of every baby and what what happened why 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 did they all become stillborn and why did you do this which all makes sense to be asking yeah those. yeah <clears throat> then at one point she made the mistake of saying that it was either the babies or at least one baby had cried or gasped when they were born which made the police stop because if the baby had taken a breath or made a noise the baby stillborn. was not stillborn nope. so on may 20th 2003 diane was arrested by the new york state police department and she was charged with six counts of second degree murder by december 2023 her trial began but before we get into the trial i wanted to touch on who diane was because her story is a little bit interesting too so diane was born in 1953 in orwell township pennsylvania as a child diane was a rebel growing up in a very catholic again religion Mm -hmm. household with strict morals diane would be known for drinking doing drugs and sleeping around with various men She was known as headstrong, a go-getter, and she didn't let anything get in her way. This next part that I'm going to touch on. Which I think, by the way, headstrong, go-getter. It's not a bad thing. That that I think are all good qualities. No, and not even the partying and doing drugs and sleeping around, that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? But But it always gets worse when there's religion involved. Yeah, it does. So the next part I only saw on one source, so I can't really confirm how how much of it is true. I think it adds a little bit to her mindset and give some insight to her. But again, I don't know how much this is true. So um, at the age of six, it's reported that Diane suffered from a traumatic sexual assault. Um, Apparently one day her father told her that someone would be coming to the door and that she had to answer it. So when she heard the door knock later that day, she didn't question it and she went right to it. Opening the door, allegedly she saw a masked man standing there with a knife. Diane ran inside calling her for her father. However, the man got her and allegedly raped her. With her father right there at the dining room table, not doing anything and watching it. Source said that Diane's father later went to the man and said, good job, son. As if like it was planned. Now, again, I don't know. Yeah, there could have been a story how, that maybe she spun that maybe isn't true. But it, yeah, and it could know. be because there's yeah. other there's other allegations from her in just a little bit that are like, I don't know if what if this was her trying to build a story or if this yeah, is real, yeah, because yeah. I, this part I only just saw in the one spot, but sure. the same source also talked about how abusive her family was in general, that her father would physically and sexually assault her and that her mother would sell her daughter in to suitors to pay for her drug and gambling debts. But again, I, that's the only place I saw that. So I'm, I don't want to guarantee yeah. anybody that that's real, but that was just part of what I read. It's also said that her rebellious rebelliousness was so bad that her parents felt like they had to move often After she got in trouble, they would pack up and move. They just felt like they had to keep moving because of her. So by 1974, Diane eventually met James O'Dell. She had it in her mind that she wanted to have like this ideal family and be a home wife and do all of that. Really like do the life that she didn't grow up in. Mm -hmm. That she could turn her ways and be a mother in a happy home with a man who could take care of all of them. So James and Diane eventually got married and moved to Florida and they had three children. By 1981, Diane started to get bored. She was slowly starting to drink again and cheat on her husband. So after five years, James filed for divorce and Diane left, leaving him and their three children and moved back with their with her mother in New York. Here, Diane fell into her old ways. And I have slooting around, sleeping around with multiple men, whatever <laughs> she, she wants. She slooting around. By 1985, she ended up sleeping with a man named Robert Saarstein. S-A-U-E-R-S-T. T-E-I-N, yeah, yeah Sauerstein. They eventually fell in love and had a relationship. They never ended up getting married, uh, but they did have five children together. I, from what I read, they were a low-income family uh, that was on welfare. Diane, Diane was known to have worked many retail jobs. However, she jumped around because she was known to be very combative with coworkers, which ended with her eventually being fired from her jobs. In 1989, there was a knock on the door. So at this point, she's now had eight children because she had five Right, with this guy and three with the guy before. Yes. Okay. Yes, so up to this point, she's had eight, which 
I get to later, oh, which is it. interesting that you you caught them. And this is like the first big red flag of the story. And it's why I said earlier that her story seems familiar because opening the door, sitting on the other side was the Sullivan County Police Department. Earlier that day at a salvage yard nearby, there was a car that was about to be sent to the crushing machine. On their last look in the car, a worker saw a dirty, banged up blue suitcase inside of the gar, the car, the gar, whatever. Grabbing it out, he opened up the bag to see the remains of another mummified infant. However, it's technically the first mummified infant. Quickly calling the police, they first checked the registration of the car, and in that search, they saw the, the name of Diane O'Dell. When the police took her in for questioning, she first denied it, but after showing more evidence, she eventually admitted that the baby was hers. She then told the police that when she was 16 in 1969, she was sexually assaulted by her father and it ended in a pregnancy. She said when she was giving birth, her father beat her so that when she climbed into the bathtub and gave birth, the baby was still born because of the beating. So that's where I said, I don't know if this is something that she just said because we don't know the truth behind it. She said when she had the baby, she was scared and ashamed of herself. Being 16, she didn't have the money for a burial, so she put the baby in the suitcase. She held onto the suitcase to eventually give her baby a proper burial, mm. and she held onto the baby at this point and roughly another 20 years. So she had the baby with her in her like belongings, like in her closet and everything, and eventually she decided to put the, the suitcase in the trunk of her car and then just left it there. And then eventually the car ended up being sent to the impound lot with the suitcase still inside. This is in... Nineteen eighty nine, and <clears throat> it happened in nineteen sixty nine. So it's a weird coincidence of like the twenty years. But when the infant was brought to the examiner, the body was so profoundly decomposed that it was hard to tell if there was foul play or if the baby was stillborn. They also went to speak to Diane's father to see what he had to say, but unfortunately for them, he died a few years prior. So since there was no evidence seeming to point to foul play by Diane, the Sullivan County Police did not press any charges against Diane, and she was able to walk away a free woman after leaving an infant in a bag for up to 20 years. Jesus. Yeah. So from here, Diane's life went on, eventually coming to 1991 when she purchased the rental unit. And then by 1992, there was an incident with her husband, Robert, where he was charged with an aggre av aggregated assault on a minor. No, that no, wasn't it. Won't do it again? Aggravated assault on a minor. <laughs> I hate this. And oh. I couldn't find any more information on it. So I have no idea like what that incident was. I did try oh, to find weird. it, but I couldn't. But okay. apparently there was some incident and they decided that they moved. So they up and moved out of Arizona. So that's obviously when she stopped paying on this storage unit. Yeah, basically. Well, about, it was about that it was shortly after. It was, yeah. in, it was either 1992 or 1993. Okay. I think I said 1992 earlier. Back to December of 2003. Diane's trial relied on the testimony of forensic pathologist Dr. Michael Baden, who examined the infants alongside the Pima County, Arizona medical examiner. Neither of them were able to determine the cause of the death, being that they were so decomposed. However, the doctors were able to determine that the babies were born around 1981 and 1984, confirming the timeline Diane put forth. Her defense at the time of the trial still had the same story that the babies were stillborn. They told the story of Diane and referenced her state of mind, saying that due to the sexual and physical abuse she endured when she was younger, made it impossible for her to make a sane decision at the moment. The prosecution told a different story. They pushed the fact that Diane had other children, that the idea that she would have four stillborn kids while having eight children that lived normal lives were pretty slim. Yeah. So. Yeah. Like when you saying that, I'm like, I'm glad I'm, int I'm it sounds it's interesting me, that you caught on to that. Well, and it sounds to me that perhaps her infidelity got her pregnant and that she didn't want known. So instead she just yeah. killed the kid. Yeah. So they talked about how Diane only kept her children who had fathers. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Which I'm like, I know the next part is coming. Someone to give the children the child stability, even as she was to leave like her first husband. So they talked that every time she had a baby and the father left her, she would strangle the baby because again, she ended up telling the police that at least one of the babies was crying and couldn't calm down Jeez. throughout the case. Diane did not end up taking the stand and she has always stayed true to the fact that she did not kill her children. It's even said that after sentencing, she had stated for what I hope is the last time in my life, I will say I did not kill my children. I've been in jail of my own making for um, for most of my life. I want to know when does my suffering end? I will apologize for not making conscious, educated decisions, and I hope that one day truth and justice will set me free. I'll mm. spend the rest of my life trying to be the person I should have been. After the trial, the deliberations went on. Coming back to court, 
The jury just uh, made a decision. Diane was sentenced to 75 years to life for deprived. De- Depraved. Depraved. I swear, my eyes, it just words. It's your dyslexic, man. <laughs> After the trial, deliberations went on. Coming back to court, the jury made a decision. Diane was sentenced to 75 years to life for depraved, indifferent murder in the Bedford Hills Correctional Facility for Women in Bedford, Bedford Hills, New York, mm. and was convicted of, of three counts of second-degree murder. The earliest she'll be eligible for parole is in 2028. That's actually not that far away. No, it's not. So I have a couple interesting facts. I don't remember what I put in here, but I'll read them. According to police records, Diane hadn't rented the storage unit until 1991. So she had the bodies of the infants with her in her home with her husband and children for over 10 years before they were placed inside the storage unit. Oh my Lord. So she had the babies in her closet for 10 years before she put them in the storage unit, which is why it was the 20 years. How does that not smell disgusting i don't know. or like how do how do you mask that i wasn't a sneaky kid but like i definitely oh i snooped for sure well of course you did i was too afraid <laughs> of my adopted mom that made me kill roosters that i didn't but i uh certainly wrapped up in blankets and stuff. i don't know there there could be an opportunity or a way that somebody accidentally found them yeah i don't know but then i went as i was looking i was i saw a couple different terms for people who have killed their children mostly women so I didn't know there was these different terms. I thought it was interesting. So there's the one term. Uh, I'm going to screw these up. Neo, neoticide. Ne- How do you say that? Neonticide. Neonticide. Don't look at it like I'm wrong. That's a difficult word. Anyways, that word is the term that is used to describe the act of a parent who kills their baby <laughs> within 24 hours Sweet. of giving birth. That, that is was like also really though. creepy. Ew. Some little child just screamed in the hallway. That was really creepy. It was actually pretty creepy. Uh, we should just have that playing in the background. I, the mean, whole time. I, I mean, hello. It's a term that describes the act of a parent killing their baby within 24 hours of giving birth, which I thought was interesting. Huh. Okay, child. Um, it's literally a baby just screaming in the right? wall. I mean, not in the wall. In the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I hope You've there's no babies, babies in, in the wall. wall. Jesus Christ. Um, and then there's infanticide. Which describes someone who kills a child within its first year of birth. Mm. And then there's also filicide, which refers to a parent killing their child after the, the first 24 hours. Oh, oh my gosh. I thought that this was so interesting. reminds me of the TV show. I think it's called The Servant. The one on Apple TV with Rupert Grint or whatever his name is from him. Harry Styles. Yeah, yeah. From yeah. Harry Styles. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> Jesus, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with all of us? I know it's delirium. Oh, Jesus, that was funny. But <laughs> I think it's called a servant. Yeah. And it's about a woman who accidentally left her baby in the car and the baby died like yeah. overnight. But she she was like so delirious from a lack of sleep that she, she like realize. just completely forgot that That's the baby so was in there and went in there and went to bed. But it gets really weird. The show yeah. gets so weird because it like plays with your brain to be like, is that actually what happened? You should watch it. It's creepy as hell. Oh yeah, we should watch it. That actually it. sounds really good. There, there's a lot of cases of like, what is it called? What, what's the, the term is escaping my mind right now, but with women with severe depression, post, postpartum, postpartum. postpartum yeah. yeah. yeah postpartum well, there, there's actually quite a few cases of, Oh, a ton of Especially that. early in the day when people didn't believe that women were going through that where they um, killed their kids and it's just horrible. Yeah. Well, this um, the servant was like genuinely really scary to me because it? I watched it while I was high. <laughs> so that'll <laughs> well, do that, it. That helps. But in my brain, I was like, oh my God, what's to stop you from doing that? Yeah. From just like forgetting that there's a baby in your backseat. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like... That's interesting. Yeah. The, God, it's, there's so many of those. This is why sometimes I need to be careful with getting high because I had, I got, listen, because you're going to forget a baby. No, well, no, <laughs> no, but there was, um, there was a time where we, I had an edible here at our apartment and it was this child in the hallway. I know, right? And it, and it was so aggressive when I had this edible that I had an anxiety attack in the fucking elevator. He did. And oh, God. I thought the elevator was going to fall and it was horrible. And was I was fun. just standing in there like, he was like, <laughs> Quietly freaking out to himself. Yeah, it, was, it was really creepy. Wow. That one was fucked yeah, up, Brandon. So that's the Thank story of that. Little Boxes. <laughs> little Boxes. <laughs> in, oh my God, in, Brandon. In the... In, in somewhere. The storage they were somewhere. Little Boxes full of little babies. Oh my God. That's, that's awful. Can we 
Cut that. Just kidding. Diana Dell's a duck. I know. I feel like we okay. have to end all of the stories saying, fuck you, Diane. Fuck you, Diane. Wait. Oh, like, also, you, I looked up the name Diane O'Dell because I wanted an image with what I was, what you were talking about. <laughs> yeah. And did you know that the other Diane O'Dell, you might know this from the research that you did, but when you look up Diane O'Dell, the other Diane O'Dell that's famous was famous because she contracted polio at age three and then she had to spend the rest of her life in an iron lung. Oh my God. And then she died during a power outage. Oh my gosh, that's awful. No, I saw that there was another one, but I didn't click on it. Well, Damn. I just, this is what you see when you Google her. So I was like, well. I did see that photo. Oh my God, yes. Yeah. That's, and she's like in the chamber. You know, I, I clicked on it. I saw it and I was like, oh, that's not the same woman. So I clicked out of it. Yeah. Oh, Diane. Crazy. Wow. Well, I guess don't say fuck you, Diane. Well, not that Diane. Yeah. This fuck Diane. You, Diane O'Dell, the murderer. Yeah, but this, Medra. I mean, this Diane is no. not no. the nicest looking. No, she's creepy. Yeah, she looks like she'd kill t- yeah. She children. has like a mullet. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, ew. She looks like my biological mom, kind of. Okay, my turn. Are we ready? I am so excited. Guys, this one's interesting. I wanted to do a little spin on Mommy Dearest. And so my episode is titled, Judy. Why so greedy? Rude. <laughs> it was May 19th, 1980. When Judy and her two sons and daughter, Michael Boinoano, let me say that again, Michael Boinoano, 19 years old and James Goodyear Jr., 14 years old, and Kimberly, 13 years old, ventured out into Florida's East River for a canoe trip. The canoe was a two-seater. So Michael was placed in a folding chair and tied to the boat. Kimberly remained on the shore as all the others went out. While on the water, rather, the moat... The moat? The moat. <laughs> so the it's not boat. just me. No. <laughs> the boat mysteriously capsized. Both Judy and James made it to shore, but Michael drowned. Oh. You know, the one chi- tied to a lawn chair on the boat. Yeah, like, why was he tied? Just wait. Michael, who had joined the U.S. Army at the age of 18, on his way to his post... So he joined the army, he got stationed, he was going to his post, so he was in Georgia. He was uh, on his way when he stopped to visit his mom, Judy. After that, and he got there, he fell pretty ill after eating a meal at his mom's house. <laughs> so afterwards, he was quickly diagnosed with suffering from arsenic poisoning. Oh my gosh. But for some reason, I guess it, they were like, okay. So this illness actually led to him getting a crippling condition that left him paralyzed in his lower extremities. Leading to him actually being discharged from the army. So he had arsenic poisoning and didn't die. Mm -mm. And And did anything happen? Instead affected his legs and lower extremities. So he was discharged from the army. The disability actually made him have to rely on his mom. So he moved in with her. And because of his limited use of his lower legs, he wore heavy metal leg braces to help him walking. So he actually wore these metal leg braces on May 13th when the the canoe... capsized why, yeah so why would they uh, why would he have his legs we'll see like that on the boat so because of this he was weighed down by his heavy braces and drowned his mother judy buenoano collected one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars in military and life insurance benefits after her son's death so friends this is a story of serial killer judius judy buenoano who's also known as the black widow sorry judius <laughs> judius that sounds like a demon's name, but yeah. Right? It, it reminds me of that, was that that Lady Gaga song? Judah, Judah. Uh, uh. Yeah, I think that's called Judas. It is, it is. But Judas. Judas. Close enough. Okay, so this one I kind of wanted to combine a serial killer, but not necessarily a mom who killed her kids, but so killed like, more. Oh, so she didn't just kill her family, so she killed him. Oh. Yeah. So Judy was born. It's a Judeus, different take. It is. I know. Thank you. You're welcome. Judy was born Judius Welty on April 4th of 1943 in Quana, Texas. Never heard of Quana. Do you know where that is? Do you know where that is? No. Nope. Okay. Yeah. Me neither. So she had two older siblings and a baby brother named Robert. So her mom actually ended up dying of tuberculosis when she was four years old. So her and her little brother Robert were sent to live with their grandparents. So as they were living with their grandparents, her father actually ended up remarrying. And so when he did that, Judy and Robert moved in with him and they moved to Roswell, New Mexico, my birthplace, where my biological family mother? lives. No. Oh, fuck all of them. Thank God. I wonder if she knew her though. Actually, no, not fuck all of them. Fuck some of them. Yeah. No, my dad's still there. No, he's pretty great. Yeah, he's cute. Have you been to Roswell, New Mexico? Yes. It is an so interesting bizarre. place. Only in passing though. Yeah. Okay. Did you drive through Main Street? 
with the alien Yes, lights. I think yeah. so. I've definitely seen the alien like the memorial billion. Yeah. It's weird ass, but it's a weird it fucking town. I remember the first time we went to go to Thanksgiving one year. I felt super uncomfortable. Everywhere we were there, I just felt like this weird like ugh. And I don't know why. Well, there was a lot of Trump it, flags. It, and yeah, well, it was. It was, sure. it was during Very, that time, for sure. But it's it really also reminds me of, there's a little town called Post. It's oh. really close to my hometown. Oh, really? It's like an hour away, probably, which in Texas is, close. is really close. <laughs> and Robert Pattinson drove through there once for some reason. Like, he was on a tour or something, and he, like, came through. He came through my hometown, but... When he went on Ellen, the generous, he was talking about his time in Texas. And he was like, yeah, I went to this weird place called Post. It's like one of those really creepy towns where Christmas music is always playing all year long. <laughs> and that's the vibe of Roswell, New it's Mexico 100% as well. It's 100% the vibe. Yeah. yeah. Minus For the sure. cheery Christmas music. Yeah. yeah. No, like, like eerie. Like, eerie. Yeah. yeah. No, it's a really, it's a weird, I think that's why people talk about like the aliens and all that kind of shit there. Because there is an energy there. Yeah. That is different. It's not my it favorite place, and I'm born there, so, you know. But anyway, they moved to Roswell, New Mexico. At that time, or as uh, when she was younger, she, Judy, said that her father and stepmother were pretty abusive and would starve her and force her to work as their slave. Oh, jeez. So, in Roswell, New Mexico. So, at the age of 14, she was sent to prison for two months, Judy, after she attacked her father and stepmother and threw hot grease on her two stepbrothers. What the fuck? <laughs> after her release... She chose, the judge was like, do you want to go back home or do you want to go to this other, re, you know, reform school? So she chose to go there, which was a school in Albuquerque. I um, feel like that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So but if you're going to do that, maybe you shouldn't be with them. Or, well, she's the one that chose it. She's like, no, I don't want to be with them. I'm going to go. No, I know. School. I'm saying yeah. that was probably a good choice where she sure. went to boarding school and, or reform school. Instead but also, of, if I were the father, stepmother or the two stepmothers, <laughs> like, like, I don't want you here. I don't want her here. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, she graduated in 1960 from Foothills High School, which is a reform school. Not too long after that, she returned to Roswell, New Mexico, Ugh, and began why? working as a nurse's aide under the new name Anna Schultz. God, so, it's so creepy when people change their name like that. I agree. I changed my name. Yeah, but you, you changed... <laughs> but, I agree, but I did it. Well, what's yeah. the purpose of her changing her name at that point? I While she know. moved back to her hometown, anything. you changed your name because you didn't like your adoptive family that yeah. changed it for you. I was Kevin Talaska at birth. It changed to Kevin Hanson when I was 12 when I got adopted. At 20, I changed it back to Kevin Talaska, so it is yeah. a little different. And technically, yeah. I changed my name as well. You do Brendan. Yeah, the birth on my birth certificate, the nurses fucked up and put Brendan instead of Brandon, so I had to get it fixed. <laughs> oh, Brendan's well, cursed. Yeah, I don't like it. Do we, have a, we have a friend's name. That son's name is Brendan. Sorry, Brendan. You know. yeah. Your name He's is adorable, cursed. though. <laughs> uh, your name's cursed. <laughs> I say that. No, I'm, I'm not going to. Oh, wait, why? You have to tell the story now. <laughs> I hooked up with a guy named Brendan in college, and he was really weird. <laughs> That's why it's cursed. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> okay, off the record, we'll talk about it. Okay, March 30th, 1961, Judy gives birth to her first son, who she named Michael Schultz. So there were rumors that this father, that his father was actually a pilot at the nearby Walker Air Force Base, which is the Air Force Base that's in Roswell. Mm -hmm. Funny story, my biological dad used to live on that Army base. Yeah. So I lived on that Army base before I, my whole life went to shit. But that Kate, that was actually never confirmed if that was the dad. Cut Your to, dad wasn't the not mine, father? Not his. My dad is definitely my dad. I look literally exactly like him. I mean, but, you do. <laughs> but this guy, they never knew who his, um, who his real dad was. Cut to January 21st, 1962, Judy marries James Goodyear, an Air Force sergeant in Roswell, New Mexico. That same year, James ended up adopting Michael. Oh, that's nice. January 16th, 1966, Judy gives birth to her second son, James Jr. And obviously, James Goodyear was his dad. So the family actually then relocates to Orlando, Florida, in 1967. Of course, Florida. I know. There's a lot of ties here. Judy gives birth to a daughter, Kimberly. So in 1968, Judy, now Judy Goodyear, opened up the Conway Acres Child Care Center, to which she listed James, her husband, as co-owner. So James was in, he was active and, mm -hmm. and obviously went to Vietnam. And so he went on a tour to Vietnam and ended up coming back. To Orlando. Did he consent to the signing? I couldn't, I couldn't find that out. No. Yeah, but he was listed on that, yeah. which I think is interesting. They were married, though. So yeah. I mean, been that's a normal like, thing. It yeah. could not have been. Yeah. We're on everything. So, But it's different because we're also doing it together. You're, and one of us isn't being shipped off to another and country. And we're not murdering each other. So well, that, that too. <laughs> September 15th, 1971, after just returning home from his recent tour in Vietnam, James, who was 37, which is my age, was admitted to the U.S. Naval Hospital in Orlando with gastrointestinal 
gastrointestinal symptoms. Even though the doctors did all they could, James ended up passing away from what they said was a heart attack. A 37? Yeah. Was it the arsenic? Hold, please. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly after, Judy cashed in all three of his life insurance policies, receiving 28000 in life insurance. It's always for a life insurance policy. Well, 64000 in Veterans Administration benefits. Wow. So a few months later, Goodyear's home also caught on fire randomly. And she again collected, taking additional $90,000 in insurance from that. So she's made like over $180,000 from the death of her husband. Yeah, she made quite a bit. Yeah. Judy then met and began dating a man named Bobby Joe Morris. Bobby Joe. That's very, very a Southern name. It, it's a yeah, yeah middle um, Florida name. Bobby hey, Joe. Bobby Joe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bobby Joe. Well, I believe lived in Pensacola. So, or no, he lived actually where they were in Orlando, but then he ended up moving to Pensacola. She and the kids all joined him there. They didn't live there that long, but while they were there, before they moved again to Trinidad, Colorado, which is also an interesting Why town. Why is it... Like, it's all these, it's like towns, all these places right? you've lived. Well, I mean, not Trinidad. I haven't but, lived in Trinidad, but I know But Trinidad you've very lived well. in all three states. I have. There's um, correlation. <laughs> anyway, before leaving Pensacola to go to Trinidad, Colorado, there was another house fire, and she collected insurance money on that one, too. There's a lot of stories that are like this where they cashed in on so many different things. Mm -hmm. Is there, there has to be like some point where somebody's like, oh, they keep. It, Getting all this it, money. They finally figure it out. But the shorty, uh, shorty, shorty, <laughs> shorty, <laughs> like a melody. <laughs> na, 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 every day. What the fuck? Okay. Shortly. <laughs> See, it's I not like only you, Bob. It's not only you. <laughs> shorty. <laughs> Jesus. Shortly after landing in Colorado, Bobby Joe became ill and was admitted to the hospital on January 4th, 1978 with gastrointestinal and other problems. The two patterns later, are patternering. I know. Are <laughs> patternering. <laughs> so two days after he was discharged, he ended up collapsing at the dinner table and was readmitted where he finally died on January 21st of 1978. So oh, Bobby Joe. At the time, Judy had taken out insurance policies on Bobby Joe and collected on those as well. And they actually, I found it everywhere. They said that she silently collected, which I don't really know what that means, but I think it just means that she Shh. probably... <laughs> That's my money. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't, weird. But I think that she just wasn't outrageous about spending it. Yeah, she wasn't flashy. Yeah. yeah. Well, because in that <clears throat> sense, if somebody's not like being going crazy with the money, they're more than likely probably doing what they should be, which is like yeah. covering costs of things and doing things that all aren't those, extravagant. All those things. So she was smart about this. Bobby Joe also ended up passing away from what they said was a heart attack. Even though they weren't married, she did not marry Bobby Joe. Judy was considered his common-law wife and, as such, was able to collect all of the insurance money. That's crazy. Did you know that, you, like, in general, you don't have to be married to somebody to have an insurance policy on them? All you need I is their social security number, and you can have an insurance policy. Oh, see, I don't like which that because anybody I, could take shit out of them. Which then. I've learned because of The Real Housewives. Oh. Because <laughs> it, it's stupid. Because there is one Reality insurance TV. agent, That's Vindy Gundelson, who What's was... Vicky Gundelson, I think is Gundelson. her name. She was... Married to a man who faked having cancer. She got an insurance policy out on him. They broke up and she just, she like talks about how she still has it. If he dies, she will get the money from it. So you could, uh, yeah, it's a whole thing. You need to watch it. I wonder, it's if there's a good a way, show. I wonder if there's a way to check on if you have insurance money on you or if there's a policy under your social it's, security number that you don't know. About. I don't know. Oh, that's creepy as fuck. Let's look into it. My family's creepy enough. There are some creepy I know. I might have just given them all like, of the, those ideas right now but yeah let's not do that thank you they're probably not listening, listening to this um <laughs> for sure Take anyway out an insurance policy before you murder someone okay. yes. thank you kevin's uh, social security number is <laughs> <laughs> no so she was considered his common law wife collected so anyway she returned to pensacola florida naturally ended up changing her name to judy buenoano which is grammatically incorrect translation <laughs> For Goodyear in Spanish. <laughs> so she so took she just tried to make her it. dead husband's name Goodyear and was like, I'm gonna translate this into Spanish. <laughs> bueno ano. And now I'm gonna be is she bueno Spanish? Ano. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> she when she was born, I did read something that said that when she was born, she said that she was some Native American tribe that didn't exist. <laughs> oh, so God. she's just Ew, full of she's shit. like Hilaria Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> 
100%. Hillary. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> is that that woman that pretended to be black? No. No, no. it's, it's no. Alec Baldwin's wife who is oh. pretending that she's Spanish when she's oh, from Jesus. Connecticut. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and the woman you're thinking about is Rachel Dolezal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Stupid ass. <laughs> Who was like the head of like the I NAACP identify in as one location. black. You can't do that. Oh my <laughs> god, white people, which is who I am. But still, like, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. But Judy, the first thing is admitting there's a problem, I and know. the problem is that we're white. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, true. And, but you can't really change funny. it. You no, can't no, change that. No, no. <laughs> yeah, you can't. You okay, can't so fake it till you make it. Judy Boynoano. That's so Which funny. I can't like the, the last name is funny. I was wondering why you said it the way you did the first time. That's I'm why like, that felt weird. And I, guys, I was like, really? So I went to Google to translate it, and I was like, oh, that's that's it. But it's bueno space año or something. Yeah, like it is not bueno ano. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. That brings us to Judy Buenoano's son's drowning. After his drowning, this is Michael. Judy opened a nail salon with that money in oh. Gulf Breeze and began dating a man named John Gentry. So she was on the prowl again. Do you not like when you get into a relationship with somebody like talk about their past and try to get to know each other? I mean, we did. Like, did you, yeah, but did she not say like, oh yeah, I had my husband, he died. I had my other husband, he died. Well, <laughs> so, like from the same thing. Yeah. Right? Like, do also you I not, murdered them. I don't know. Who is like, yeah. oh yeah, you've had a couple people die very suspiciously well, and you captured all of their I money. Like, okay. I feel like now it's a lot easier than what it was in yeah, the I guess 80s, it's right? Nice. Like you could Probably. just run away from everything. John Gentry actually described first seeing her in a bar, and I thought it was super creepy. So picture it. 1980-something. Oh, now I feel like I'm okay, on. Okay, Sophia. Sophia. The Golden Girls. <laughs> no, but then that one felt like, oh, man, Wendy McClellan. Wendy Cubby, McClellan. Whatever Cubby. her name. Yeah, that show. When he's like, it, it was 1980-something. Oh, yeah, The Goldbergs. The Goldbergs. Oh, mm-hmm. Have you seen that show? So good. I think so. The sitcom? Yeah, yeah. 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 So good. Anyway. All right. So picture it. It was 1980 something. He walks into a 1980s bar. Smoke is billowing all around. Drinks are flowing. He's, he's setting the scene right now. I am. It's dark. It's moody. It's just gorgeous. He walks in ready to su- shoot some shit, drink all night. And he sees a tall, slender woman standing at the bar, all dressed in black, just looking. That was it. That's all. Oh. <laughs> I thought there was going to be more to that. No, that was it. Though she was tall, I was standing at a bar. Yeah. Okay. And wearing black. That was a lot of production um, for I know. that. You're welcome. That Thank you. Take. <laughs> Thank you. You can hire me. <laughs> anyway, no, he's actually, his full quote was, she was standing at the bar all dressed in black. She wore black a lot. In fact, psychologically, I think that says a lot about her. Mm. Which I was like, that's offensive. I Dark wear black a lot. Cold. Well, I mean. I do it to cover my man boobs. You're also but tall, standing at a bar. But I'm not slender. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> so they started dating. And after Judy fed him all sorts of lies about who she was, basically it was like she was a nurse and she went to college and all this kind of shit. Basically just dressed herself up in this am- amazing life. And so he believed her like an idiot. In that process, she actually convinced him to get life insurance policies for both of them at $50,000 each and named each other as beneficiaries. What he did not know is that Judy went and upped his policy to 500000 <laughs> That is a jump. Mm-hmm. Initially, Judy tried to kill him by giving him vitamin C capsules. He caught a cold at some point, and, and because she was like, I'm a nurse, she's like, take all these vitamin C capsules. So he starts taking the vitamin C capsules, but they made him feel super nauseous and dizzy. When he complained, Judy was like, take more. <laughs> so he did. And the pills ended up making him so sick that he ended up in the hospital. Oh my gosh. He was treated, released, and um, I think it was like a week later or so. Judy, now I read this only one place, so I didn't put it in here, but I'll just tell you real quick. I only read it in one place. I don't know that this is true. But Judy, apparently that morning, was like, John, I'm pregnant. We should celebrate. Go get liquor. So she sends him to... To celebrate my pregnancy? <laughs> Correct. That's Let's what get like, wasted. <laughs> that's what I was like, What? <laughs> He leaves. Such a good mom. He leaves their house to go to the liquor store. On his way to the liquor store, his car explodes, (laughs) which seriously injures John. Oh my God, it doesn't even kill him. It just does not kill him. She's having some bad luck with this one. I know. She goes to. At first, she doesn't succeed. So he goes to the hospital. He's recovering. Four days later, he was well enough to answer questions from investigators. 
because they were like, a car just doesn't blow up. They start digging into Judy's background. Finally. Because of this. It only took you how long? Mostly because he, I think, was questioning some stuff. He gave the, the investigators those vitamin C pills, to which they examined and found arsenic in it. Duh. This actually led to the detectives searching a little bit more. They found wire and tape that were also found in the car from the bomb in Judy's bedroom. So that opened up a bigger investigation, <laughs> which included them ex- uh, the exhumation, exhumations <laughs> Jesus, Jesus. of her son, Michael, her first husband, Goodyear, and her ex-boyfriend, Bobby Joe Morris. Can we just say, like, if you decide to ever murder somebody, and I hope you don't, get rid of all of the evidence. Just don't, like, hang on to some of it, because they will track it down. Like, it's just yeah. so dumb. Why would you leave that? Don't give people advice on what they're... <laughs> I mean, nobody's going to actually do it. Yeah, they're going to go to, they're going to get caught and be like, so Brandon on Homicide the Podcast told I me. I learned this from Homicide <laughs> the Podcast. I'm like, just watch Forensic Files or any know, right? shit, and then you get all the information. Each time they exhumed a body, all of them had obvious signs of arsenic poisoning in general. So they did not die of heart attacks. In that sense, they died of arsenic poisoning. Judy ended up being arrested initially for the attempted murder of John, but was actually released on bail. And then on January 11th of 1984, she was rearrested and charged with first degree murder of her son, Michael. She was tried separately for each murder and attempted murder. And she was actually described in trial as a scheming, cold blooded killer, which is also when she was dubbed the Black Widow. On June 6th of 1984, she was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole for the murder of her son. In the fall of 1985, she was found guilty of first degree murder for James and sentenced to death. By electric chair. Oh, wow. So it's estimated that Judy collected around $240,000 in insurance money from all deaths. So she only got convicted of the two. Of the three. So she didn't get convicted. Because she got got sentenced to the electric chair, I think is why. Yeah. (sighs) Fast forward to Judy's execution. Monday, March 30th, 1998, uh, which is actually would have been her son's 37th birthday. Oh, my gosh. Judy was executed by electric chair. She was 54, and she became the first woman executed in Florida since 1848. Oh, wow. Which is interesting, because I thought that was Eileen Warnos. But no, this is... um, Which is also another crazy story. Not a mother, but Eileen Warnos is fucked. But we'll do that one eventually. There's been a lot of shit on that. But if you've never seen the movie Monster with uh, Christina Ricci and Charlie's Throne, Mm -hmm. it's fucking incredible. But it's about Eileen Warnos. So that was Judy. Fuck you, Judy. I know. <laughs> it was good. And th- and this is why I said Judy. Why are you so greedy? Rude. Right? I feel she like... She just wanted the money. She did. I, th- I feel like a lot of murder is motivated by money. And it's it the is. weirdest thing. Get a job. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Don't you know you can just get hard. a job? Not that hard. God. Yeah. So, Mommy Dearest. Oh. Bueno ano. Bueno ano. <laughs> <laughs> It's such a Boinoano. Isn't that the weird? <laughs> like, what? I read that and I'm like, what a, like, Boinoano. White person thing she to do. Sounds, I mean, the Black Widow feels like it's a nickname that's giving her too much credit. Like, she yeah. sounds really cheesy. Isn't there, isn't that a Marvel character too? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's called the Black Widow, right? Isn't yeah, that? Yeah, I think so. Oh. I think so. Right? Isn't that, um, what, what's yes. her? Why am I forgetting her name right now? I love her. Yes. I don't love her. I don't know her. But Scarlett Johansson. Yes, Scarlett Johansson. Actually, Scarlett Johansson was in a movie when I was a lot younger. Shit, what was it? It was um, about a horse. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't only about a horse. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so bizarre. It wasn't about a horse, but there was a horse in it. It might have been about a horse. The Horse Whisperer. Is that what it's called? Wait. The Horse Whisperer? <laughs> Wait, I think we were watching. I don't know what we were watching, but we were watching something with Kate Winslet in it. Oh, and yeah. it was a my friend story. was like, what's what's this woman's name? Blah, blah, blah. Like, what else has she been in? Which is a crazy thing to ask about Kate Winslet. About Kate Winslet especially. But in my brain, I was like, you don't know who Scarlett Johansson is? <laughs> And then she and then she looked at me like I was crazy and, and was like, like, "That's not Scarlett that's Johansson. Not her. <laughs> that's amazing." Also, Kate Winslet. You know what I love? Her? There, I I came across something that she was a she was a singer is a singer, like a really good one. And it said if if she wouldn't have been an actress, she would have been a pop star. Wow. And I was like, that's so. She is in a parallel universe, right? Anyway, the movie is The Horse Whisperer. It's so random. By the way, there's a lot of like big name people in here. It is, yeah. Robert Redford, I think, was in it. Yeah, yeah. He is. Apparently, he directed it. Fuck. 
he's the horse whisperer in it, but basically Scarlett Johansson is like a horse rider gets kicked off this horse and becomes deathly afraid of them. And he helps to like have her fall back in love with it. It's such a fucking good movie. It sounds fascinating. Why were we talking about that? I don't remember. Yeah. Well, and now she's, we the, now she's the black widow and we've lost everybody. Yep. Who was listening to the podcast. <laughs> yeah. So all, if you are listening, all don't forget to rate point. and subscribe. <laughs> Oh my God. Yes. Episode eight, Mommy Dearest. Please go rate and uh, review only five stars. Thank you so much on Apple Podcasts, mm-hmm. Spotify. You know, even yeah. if you don't like it, just a five star. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to do my. my we, Your face. I was, You're I was, like. I was trying to do the like famous like Ron DeSantis smile. Ooh. <gasps> Did you watch that debate? Did you watch that so debate awful. with him and Gavin Newsom? No. Oh, he's so. Cringy he is it's that smile. Like if I was his PR team, which I never would be, but if I was, I would be like, "You need to work on the smile." And that's not it. That's really creepy too. He has like a little tongue that comes up. He's like, Ew. he's like, yeah. He just looks like he's trying to force himself to smile so he doesn't have and, a resting and, bitch and, face, or like he has like dry mouth, like it's oh. gross. No, but if I was his PR team, I would be like, get together, right? Like, let's fix the smile. <laughs> yeah, except it's they're creepy. giving him. Boots with heels. <laughs> Ron DeSantis is the Florida guy, right? Yeah, he's the Florida guy. I, also, I mean, he's like definitely on a lot of coke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, no question. I would he's not like, be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> always. <laughs> he's horrible. Yeah. I think he's such a horrible human being. Episode eight. Thanks so much. Yay. Goodbye. <laughs> no. <laughs> I like that. Bye. Bye. <laughs>